It's what you do. Hi. For today's video, we are bringing back a series that I honestly thought was done. I thought we were over it. I have done four episodes on this. It has quickly come to my attention that pretty much everyone wants to see finishing childhood art kits. So we're gonna do this. I am finishing art kits that I never finished when I was a kid. No, I never finished it. If you don't know, my family is a bunch of hoarders and we have everything I ever owned in my basement. So when I cleaned out the art room, I found a lot of art kits. Let me just get everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The water bottle strikes again. <laughs> There's more. We went through the game closet, and in the game closet, I discovered a lot more stuff. This thing is so dusty. <clears throat> Look at this. Dust. Let me just introduce everything so we all know what's on the table. We have these stained glass things, a friendship bracelet kit, and another friendship bracelet kit. So we're just gonna like combine these. A beginner stitching kit. I don't know where the Care Bears are. I didn't want to paint them, but I mean, they just left. So one more paint by number. Oh no, don't drop, don't fall, don't, don't. Ah! The beginner's pottery wheel. <laughs> Is this on? We have a CSI impression kit on the scene of a crime. We also have another CSI kit for fingerprints. And we have a mega science lab crystal growing kit. Let me decide, what do we wanna do? I wanna do this. It looks like it might be boring or it looks like it might be impossibly hard. Let's try it. Okay, so here is the box. It looks like my camera is very blurry, but after cleaning it, I realized it was just the dust. How fun. So this is the Beginner Stitchery Deluxe Set. Weird name. So a door critter. I'm assuming this is the critter. Create a needlepoint picture, a cross stitch picture, a cross needlepoint, I don't know. Create five stitchery projects. One, two, three, four, five. We've got sewing, needlepoint, and cross stitch. I don't know what this is and I would never refer to it as a stitchery project, but here it is. Also, I just wanted to point out these horrifying projects on the bottom. What is that? All right, now that we've inspected the outside of the box, let's open it up and look at the contents. We have the frog, the cross stitch, the needle point, the picture frame, and the keychain. Everything seems to be here. We also have a very large ball of yarn for our stitchery. I took out the directions. Uh-oh. If you know me, you know that I don't really like directions. I feel like they limit my creativity and also somehow make me feel less smart for having to actually read instructions. I would rather just figure it out. To me, the directions almost feel like cheating because they're telling me exactly how to do it. I'm not really figuring it out. You don't know real joy until you ignore directions and then get it right anyway. Pure bliss. So I did briefly glance at the directions before pushing it to the side. And from what it said, it said that I should go right to left. Only stitching from right to left didn't really make any sense to me because then you have to keep cutting the yarn and switching colors. So instead, I decided to ignore those directions and go in any order that I wanted. Chaos. I went around in a heart-shaped pattern and I stitched as best as I could. If anyone here knows how to do needle pointing, I know this is probably incorrect. For what it's worth, I absolutely hated the result of this little craft. This keychain is bad, but I tried my best, and we're gonna move on to the frog. The thing I really wanted to do. Either me or one of my three other siblings did start this craft kit as a kid. I don't remember doing it, but it could have very well been me. We've got some googly eyes, love those. And some pieces of paper that let people know your current status. My room is a mess, guys. Don't really think I need that to be a message since that's kind of always the case. Although I don't know how to do cross stitching or needlepoint, I actually do know how to sew. I used to take sewing lessons when I was younger for like two years straight every week. I would go to sewing class. I used to like sew my own outfits in fifth grade and wear them. It was a whole thing. My sewing lessons were primarily involving an actual sewing machine, but I do also know how to sew and stitch things by hand. 
One of my first projects when I was little was actually a hand-sewn stuffed animal. I could probably insert a video of it. I actually have this little handmade bear in my studio right now just because I like it a lot and it was one of my first arts and crafts projects as a kid. I love sewing. I used to do sewing projects on my channel and I'm glad I did this kit because it kind of reminded me of that. I took out my very disgusting hot glue gun and while it was heating up, I messed around with the facial expressions on the frog, trying to get the best expression we could possibly land on. Perfect. Now that my hot glue gun is actually hot, I can glue the two medium-sized eyeballs on, as well as the mouth. I did decide to make the mouth a sad frown, and then I also decided to make the eyebrows sad. I was originally gonna do an angry frog, but then I remembered Pepe. Our sad froggy me me me. I felt like Pepe was missing something to cheer him up, so I decided to make a pink bow, cut off the little pieces so that everything was even, and then glued it to the top right part of the head. I liked this bow so much that I decided to make a second bow, because why not? I have so much yarn. And then I glued that to the heart. I guess this frog is no longer Pepe, but rather Paprika. I don't like this keychain at all. I think it turned out really terrible, so we're gonna move that out of the shot. And here is the final door hanger, Paprika our little froggy door critter. I actually really love her, especially when she's hanging on the door. This is just delightful. What a fun craft. Let's move on to the next one. Up next, we will choose this. We're gonna try to grow some crystals, guys. I feel like this one won't work because it's so old and it's so much dust on it. It's making me like, have it like, <sighs> I'm gonna have like an asthma attack from this. Get this away from me. And into my workspace. So here we have the Mega Science Lab, which of course I am going to clean off to begin with. This one was the dirtiest of all of them. Get this away from me. Before we get some complainers in the comments, I do realize that this kit is not actually a craft kit. It's more of a science kit. It literally says Science Lab on it. But a lot of art kits actually exist for crystal growing. And that is why I decided to keep it in the pile. I also may have kept it in the pile just because I read Crystal Growing and immediately ignored everything else. Which was kind of a mistake on my part because it involved a lot of science materials, like a microscope, a measuring cup, I don't know what this is, some tweezers, a rock, sand and plaster, a map about clouds, a weather kit, which I have no idea how to use, and the periodic table of elements. But here it is, the crystal growing thing. It's apparently very dangerous. You can't get it in your eyes or on your skin. I opened up this dangerous package and discovered it's a Cheeto color. Since the package said this could burn your retinas and skin, I got my safety materials out. I also took out the crystal growing vessel as well as the vessel's plastic lid. You'll notice on this one, I very meticulously followed the instructions. Whenever danger is involved, I do make sure to read the directions. One time on this channel, I almost blinded my left eye because I got acrylic spray in it. I got acrylic spray in my left eye. It was a whole thing. And although I hate reading instructions because it actually crushes my soul to do so, I will read and follow instructions when safety is involved. The other thing is my eyes are just very large and no matter what safety goggles I wear, I always get something in my eye. So now I wear swimming goggles because they have a nice suction seal. You can't tell, but this water is boiling. It's very hot. I mixed together the crystals until it melted like the directions told me to. After I had sufficiently mixed this, I added the rocks to it. I was told in the directions that you had to put the rocks at the bottom and kind of like mush everything around. I made sure to wash my hands off several times in this process. I don't know if you can tell based on the way I've been describing things, but when it comes to science lab type of things, I've never been very good at those. The directions told me to put this in a spot no one would touch it, so I put it with my plants and let it sit for 24 hours before even checking on it. 
I looked at it and it looked exactly the same. I mean, maybe there were tiny crystals, but nothing like the picture. I let it sit for four more days. I realized that all the crystals had hardened on the bottom in like a sheet, which is not how this is supposed to be. I think maybe it's either the kit is too old, it's like 20 years old, so I don't know if that actually ruined something, or I just did it wrong. Either way, I'm gonna have to say this was a fail, and I don't like the other stuff in the kit, so we're gonna move on. And last but not least, we're gonna do this. I think this one's gonna be fun and easy. Sometimes the ones I think are easy are really hard though, so. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the three stained glass art kits. I know that this came in an art kit box at first, but I think I lost that box somewhere along the way. So we are going to be using Elmer's clear glue along with some Angelus leather paint. I've seen people use Elmer's glue for stained glass art, but I've never seen anyone mix Angelus leather paint in. It ended up working out like fine, I guess. I really just wanted to try out my neon paints. Wow, they are bright. And they work really well with the colors that are already on this stained glass. One of the hardest parts of doing finishing childhood art kits as a series is just that all of the art kits are so old and they're often missing a lot of pieces. So for this kit, I didn't have any of the paint, obviously, and I wasn't really quite sure how this was gonna turn out when it dried. It's also kind of weird to try to finish art kits you didn't like when you were a kid, because basically if I didn't finish it, it meant that I didn't like it or found it difficult in some way. And as an adult, I usually find those same art kits to be very frustrating. I don't know how to do this. However, this art kit was very nice. I always enjoy the art kits that are kind of just like, almost like coloring pages. For example, stained glass art, paint by number, felt art. All of those art kits are usually very simple, but they're also very fun. I liked them as a kid. I like them as an adult. They are truly the craft for all ages. I tried to get a little creative here with the sky and added in some white as well as some like blue to the clouds and swirled it around. Fancy. Now you might be questioning, well, if you mix together all your own paint colors, why didn't you mix together realistic colors, Marissa? Why did you paint your dog a neon green color? I am not sure if this was an actual Lisa Frank kit or not, but it was giving me very Lisa Frank vibes, and I just wanted to go with some bright colors. I don't really have a good answer for you other than I felt like it. <laughs> Once I was finished up with this larger stained glass thing, I took out the very small puppy and decided to just quickly fill it in with random colors that I had left over. I also did the puppy paw because it's small and cute. <laughs> And here we have the final result of the puppies. I think they're very cute, but I will say using Angelus leather paint, I think is probably not the best option for stained glass art. It looks fine and it is see-through, but it started to peel just a tiny bit for me. I've seen other people online using regular acrylic paint or food coloring with clear glue. So maybe in the future, I'll try that. And here we have all of the successful projects that I did this video. We have Paprika, our cute little sad frog, a keychain that I hate, as well as three stained glass art pieces that I think are very cute. If you'd like to see more of my finishing childhood art kits videos, I have them linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.